All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Acer Predator Helios 300 series. Um, this is model N17C1. Um, this looks very similar to the other Acer laptop I worked on, but this is like a gaming version. I guess they just changed the internal specs. Um, so first you want to remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, once you remove all those screws, you can remove the doors. If you're just changing the RAM, you only need to change this or take this one screw out and then you just get your fingernail or pry tool underneath and pull it up just like that. All right, as you can see, this is DDR4 memory, um, Vengeance. So this is Corsair, um, but this is like the other ones. Um, it doesn't really say the specs, but this is a 2666, um, okay. So this looks to be a 32 gig pack, so it's probably 16 gigs each stick. All right, so the RAM, yeah, you just pull these tabs to the side and then it pops up and you can pull it out. Same thing when you put it back, put it at an angle and then drop it back down. Okay, then you got the hard drive here, just same thing as the RAM door, just pop it out. All right, then you got the hard drive here. There's four screws holding it in place. Just remove those four screws. Then you can lift with the tabs here. Be careful because the hard drive connector is connected. So hold it at an angle like this, and then you can um, pull the hard drive while you hold the connector back, just like this, okay? Then you can take the SSD out. All right, then to remove the cover, what you wanna do, just like the other one, let's see here, lift it up. You'll see um, there's the gap between here. So just go with your fingernails there and then just pry along the edge, just like this. Okay, get your fingernails in or pry tool. All right, and then just pull it open just like this. All right, go all the way around. Okay. I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing, but this laptop's kind of big. Okay, so just go all the way around. Hopefully you can see everything. Okay. This one, the clips are a little bit tighter than the other one I worked on, but just keep going. Pry it up. Okay, once you get out the front and the sides. Let's see here. All right, then the back, it should come out pretty easily. Just wiggle it around. All right, oh, let's see, it's still caught. So you might have to pry it up a little on the back. So here, um, the thing gets caught on these, so you just have to go along this. All right, and then you can remove the cover. All right, so the cover is just like that. All right, I don't know if you need these little tags if there's model numbers on there you can use or anything but there you go all right just like the other one there's a battery held in place with two screws so you want to remove those two screws all right make sure you already turned off your laptop of course all right once you remove the two screws there's this tape here you want to peel that out of the way okay get that out of the way I don't know why it's there. It's not really holding anything. Okay, then the little battery, just grab the two tabs and keep wiggling it. It'll eventually pop out just like that. All right, once you got that out, then you can pull the battery up just like this at an angle. Again, these things have little feet that go into slots down here. So make sure you put the battery back into those slots. Battery model number here is, let's see if you can see that, AC14B8K. All right, so in case you need to get a replacement, here's some model numbers. All right. Now you can see on this model, um, they put the M.2 SSD. This is PCIe NVMe. As you can see, the CPU and the GPU are soldered um, down to the board, so you can't really upgrade or replace them. But um, you can um, redo the thermal cooling on it. Okay. Then just like the other one as well, keyboard connector. This one doesn't have a flip up tab. It actually has a pull, these pull tabs that you can remove the keyboard just like that. Okay. 
Um, one thing I forgot to mention, um, but if you're going to mess with stuff in here, especially the LCD cable, after removing the battery, you want to hold down the power button just to drain any excess power. Open the screen carefully because it's missing the screws here from the case. So you don't want to open it too quick or you can actually break the screw mounts. Okay, so open it. Hold the power button for a few seconds, drain any power so you don't cause any damage. Alright, be careful closing it, opening and closing it because it's, it has less screws holding it. Alright, so this one they said they were having heat issues. It doesn't look too dusty, um, so I'm most likely going to have to redo the thermal paste and then I'm just going to use some air to blow this out afterwards. Um, so let's see here, you got the USB ports and the audio jack. Um, they're all on their own separate board connected with this cable here Then you got this um, Charge port here um, You got this cable for the the hard drive and then Let's see. So this is for the charge port this cable and then you got the cable for the fans There's two wireless card. It pops up like the RAM when you undo the screw Just pull it out at an angle put it back at an angle and then push it back down to replace it the antennas you lift up from the tail and it'll pop out. Um, I'll show you one just like this. All right, and then to put it back, sorry if my hand's in the way, but just make sure it's completely lined up. Okay, you'll know if it's lined up because when it's on top of the thing, if you move it around, it will stay in place. Okay, so make sure not to try and push it down unless it's actually lined up or you can damage the connector very easily. Okay. Just like that. These cables are always a little tough to do. There you go. All right. So then you got, uh, I believe I said the keyboard. Then you got the um, trackpad connector here. You got the speaker cable here. Keyboard backlight cable here. Um, you got this little board here like the other one. I'm not sure what it's for. Um, I don't know why this is coming out. Let me see if I can put that back in. I don't know why that board was coming out. All right, so the speakers, they both connect to that one spot. Then you got the CMOS battery here, all right, and the M.2, there's the reset button just like the other one with a little hole through the back panel here. So if you need to reset the BIOS or something, if something's not starting up properly, you can try using a needle and pushing on that button, holding it down a few seconds. That'll reset that. And then you got the LCD connector here. You just pull that. Um, usually I'll pry this up a little while I'm pulling this. Um, I don't like to use pry tools because you can accidentally pry the connector off the board. So I use my fingernail and then just pry it out that way. Okay, then you got the fans here. So I'm going to remove these. I don't know if I have some customers coming soon. So I might have to end the thing soon. Um, but... Pretty much just remove all these screws holding down the CPU cooler. All right. Okay. Interesting. It's actually missing a screw here. Maybe that's why it was overheating. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to have to look for a screw for that one. Then you got one screw here holding the GPU. Another one here. So the thermal pads, um, you want to make sure to keep them clean um, because usually those, it's hard to come by all, getting all the different sizes. So if you're doing this, um, you're probably going to reuse the thermal pads. And then the thermal paste and the, um, uh, for the CPU and GPU, you're going to want to redo all of that stuff. Whenever you take these off, you want to redo the thermal paste. Okay, so we're going to finish taking out the fans. One screw here and one screw here. All right. It looks like the other screws were part of the case. Uh, sometimes people bring computers where they've opened it up before. I'm not sure if that's the case here, um, but definitely one screw is missing here. Okay. So to get the fan connectors out, peel up the tape, of course. Use the little tabs with your fingernails and just wiggle it just like that. All right. Same thing with this one. You might have to remove the hard drive connector just to get it out of the way. Okay, just be careful with that. 
there is an adhesive underneath so it might get stuck but yeah same thing with this fan connector just pull it out just like that all right i'm going to move this cable out of the way as well so this is for the usb board all right it looks like they taped all this stuff on here a little bit okay so all of those screws are out let's see if it will lift out now Okay, it looks like the fans are attached from the other side. So if you need to change the fans, you actually have to take either the whole logic board, motherboard out, or um, you have to at least remove this. Um, if I'm replacing the fans, I try and avoid removing the whole heat sink because then I have to redo all the paste. Um, so it's best if you're not redoing the paste to, and you just need to replace the fans to actually take the whole motherboard out. Okay, so here you can see the fans coming out. And they put a bunch of tape on this stuff. Okay, so here you can see the fans. All right, here you can see the paste. Um, the paste flow seems to be kind of uneven on here. Um, but yeah, you can see all the thermal pads here. Okay, so the main one you have to redo is the paste. Um, to clean this off, you use a dry paper towel, wipe off all this excess stuff, and then use some rubbing alcohol, um, spray it on the paper towel, and then wipe it up to clean up the residue, and then just repeat that a uh, few times with a clean uh, paper towel, and then just dry it off, and then you reapply the thermal paste. Um, usually you just do like a small grain of rice following the, the length of the dye, so I'll just put it like this way and then that way. And then when you put the thing down, it'll automatically spread it. You don't need to spread it out beforehand. Because if you do that, like if I were to just put this back down, it's going to trap all these little bubbles. Okay. So I'm going to open up the fan and see if there's um, any dust in there that needs to be cleaned off. Um, usually I wouldn't open, take these fans out because I would just use a strong air blower. But I'm going to open it just to see um, if that's what's causing the issue since I already took this out anyways. All right, so I'm gonna take all these screws out. So each fan, it looks like it's held in place with four screws. So because the amount of time um, it's gonna take, I'm actually just going to um, show the, the um, cleaning up of the CPU, the CPU and GPU dies, and not really the heat sink. And then I'll end the video there. But yeah, just remove all the screws here. Okay, be careful with the stuff underneath. You don't want to lay the um, this down anywhere it, because you don't want to get that stuff on anything. Okay, so you can see the fan. There's a little bit of dust here. You can see clogging that, but it shouldn't be enough to overheat it. It's only like on the edges. So I'm not really sure why this laptop would be overheating. Um, the only thing is kind of the design. They make the CPU and GPU all on one heat sink, which is kind of not a good design. They should separate the two. Um, but other than that, I don't really see why it would be overheating. So, um, yeah, I'm going to put the screws back. Um, I'll clean this out. Actually, I'll clean this out later, but I'll do that off camera. So usually I just use a strong air blower. Um, you can use a toothbrush uh, on the fins. So you can use a toothbrush to scrub this stuff off. And then I just use a powerful air blower through here to get all the, the dust out. Okay. So now I'll show you how to clean off the thermal paste. So you just get like a paper towel. Usually I'll have the board upside down. I can't really do that because I'm showing this on camera. But usually I'll have the board upside down and I'll wipe it off like that just so that the little bits don't fall into the rest of the place. But um, pretty much you just clean this stuff off just like this. Hopefully you can see. I'll just do the CPU and then and then I'll show you that. And then from there, um, you'll pretty much know how to do the other one. So I might have to take this off camera to so that these big chunks don't fall. So as you see, those the chunks of um, thermal paste are just rolling around here. 
So this kind of stuff, usually I'll have the board upside down so that way it falls into the, into the trash or something. Okay, so I'm gonna do this off camera. Okay. Well, I did some of the GPU, but I'll do the rest later. The GPU is a little more tricky because you have all these little pieces here. So a lot of times if it gets stuff in there, you'll want to clean it up with rubbing alcohol and then make sure it's completely dried before putting it back together. Okay. So use all the dry uh, paper towel. And then I'll just take, um, I have this little spray bottle with rubbing alcohol, but you can just pour a little on it and then just wipe it off, okay? Just like this. So when you wipe it, you'll see the paper towel turns a little gray, go to a new clean spot, and then just repeat it, and then when it's clean, then you know it's good to go. All right. So that's pretty much how you do that. So I'm going to put some thermal paste on the CPU just to show you um, how it looks and about how much you actually need. You don't really need much. And then I'll end the video there because I'm probably getting calls and messages that I need to respond to. Okay, that's probably too much actually. But um, just spread it out evenly. So it's like a little line across, like a grain of rice. Okay. Just like that. You want to keep the mountain of the paste um, towards the top. So that way when it pushes down, it actually spreads. The bubbles will get pushed out. Okay. So just like that. So you have um, the raised in the middle of the um, die just like that. So when you push it down, it'll actually spread the thing out like this out to all the sides and that's pretty much it um, You just put the whole thing back on top. They're numbered. So When you put this let's see if I can show you here. So when you put this here um, They'll usually number this there's like a five here. So let me see if they numbered all of them It doesn't look like okay. They did but it's not stamped well. So it's not, on this they didn't stamp it very well. I can see a 2 here and a 3 here. So I'm guessing this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you probably got the 5. Looks like, okay, this is 5, and then 6 and 7. So when you put it back, usually I'll put all the screws uh, just loosely. And then after that I'll tighten them down in the order that it shows. So I'll tighten this one, then this 2 then three, then four, and then five, and then six, and then seven. All right, so that's pretty much all to it, all there is to it. Um, hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe, because uh, that'll help me. And don't forget to put all these cables back. Um, if you're not sure, just re-watch the video. And yeah, thanks for watching, bye.